show seen throughout Australia on the National Nine Network, featuring Graham Lyle and his orchestra. And now, here's Don! <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Thank you. That's nice to know. That it's nice to know you're awake. You know, that's good. Uh, let's see. What can we do? Uh, we have a good show for you tonight. Although, I'll tell you what, according to the news tonight, I don't know if you read it or not, there's very strong rumors that Princess Di is expecting again. That's the truth. That's the truth. She actually is. Won't Princess Anne be thrilled? <laughs> Well, if it is true, it looks like Prince Charles has finally found something he can do without falling off. <laughs> to sleep, to sleep, you know, ah, you know. Oh, the other big news, of course, uh, that was in the papers uh, at the weekend is that Liz Taylor has divorced John Warner, her seventh husband. Can you believe that so far? Liz Taylor has been married uh, to Nikki Hilton, Michael Wilding, Mike Todd, Eddie Fisher, Richard Burton twice, and John Warner. That means she's dumped a Nicky, two Mickeys, two Dickies, and now she's flushed the job. <laughs> Glad you joined us tonight uh, at home and here in the studio. Uh, we got some good people for you to meet tonight. Australian international film star Mel Gibson is with us tonight. Okay. And, uh, Award-winning director Peter Weir is here. Investigative reporter uh, Richard Shears. Uh, with his new book called Azaria, and it's all about the trial, the inquests. He was there through the whole thing. He's going to tell us about it. Um, the fabulous Vic Damone is here, only one of the best singers in the whole world. Uh, John, if you're a John English fan, we're terribly sorry about John not being with us tonight. We advertised he would be. Hey, hey, hey. hey wait a minute. He's, uh, he's, uh, John is not well. That's the truth. That's why we had, to, uh, make a, we had to make a change. We got other stuff for you, though. Don't worry. Right. And our very special guest tonight, from her bed and boudoir in London, Dame Edna Everidge joins us live from the We'll have a nice time, I promise you. Okay, we got a good group back there. Nice number for you. It's Angela Ayres, Tony Bartuccio's dancers, along with Graham Lyle and the boys to get us rolling. So if you put your hands together in here, we got the beginning of a goodie. We got.
Angela as Tony Bartuccio Francis. Have a look at those kids. Aren't they beautiful? Look at them. Lovely stuff. We're coming back. We got a lot to tell you about with the Azaria Chamberlain trial. We got a man who's there for the whole thing. We'll be back to talk about it in a minute. Another hand for the kids here. Come on, you guys. Come on. So welcome. Uh, uh, the, the Lindy Chamberlain case has evoked uh, an enormous uh, response from Australians, and it seems that uh, particularly uh, in the light of the intended appeal that the controversy will be with us for quite some time. Now, Richard Shears is an English journalist and an author. Uh, he's based in Melbourne. Uh, he works as a correspondent for the London Daily Mail. Uh, he spent every day at the second inquest that was held earlier this year, and he covered most of what was happening in the courtroom during the trial. Now he's put it together in, uh, in this book, this one here, which is called Azaria. It's uh, the one with the simple title, not hard to forget. He's with us tonight, uh, and what we've asked Richard for are his personal impressions of what went on there, what he thinks went on there, uh, what he thinks of the result and so forth. And of course, uh, with him mixing with other journalists, uh, It'll be interesting to find out what they all had to say and what they think. So would you please say hello to Mr. Richard Shears. Here right. Thanks very much uh, for coming in and joining us. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, well, it's nice to be here, Don. Uh, Richard, uh, one of the, the first question, of course, that hits me is, um, do you think that the average person, through what they've read in the media, uh, you know, they see reports on television about what transpired during the court case, uh, what transpired prior to that? Um, do you think that media reporting can give the average person an accurate insight into uh, um, what went on or an accurate opinion as to what went on? Well, as we all know, Don, the, the case had unprecedented media coverage, not, not only in Australia, but um, worldwide. Mm. Um, for example, mm. the, the Daily Mail, uh, when the verdict was announced, uh, used the story on the front page and also all over page three, which is uh, quite unusual for a story from Australia to make that kind of impression in, in a Fleet Street newspaper. Yeah. Um, but was it, it was a big story there then, is what you're saying as well? Or, yes, or was it, it just sprung on them? Or? Well, um, they'd followed the case sort of with a certain amount of interest, um, but it hadn't received a great amount of publicity until that final verdict, which uh, I think um, probably shocked a lot, of, a lot of people, including myself, but yeah. perhaps we can come on to that. But we'll, we'll get on to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, wh wh what I really mean, though, Richard, is uh, you know, uh, the average fellow sitting at home looks at that, he picks up a tidbit of information here, a tidbit there, and then he passes an opinion, I suppose. Huh? Yes. Well, um, unfortunately, uh, one of the, the greatest enemies of anyone who stands in a dock is the armchair detective sitting at home. Yeah. Um, you know, a man uh, or a lady sort of watches the box and uh, she hears a little snippet of information. Um, the next morning they'll read the morning papers and they'll, they'll get another impression and then they'll read the evening paper. Um, they're getting little bits of information from all over the place and they're putting it together, but they're not putting it together necessarily in the right order. Mm. And um, one finds that, you know, you, you walk down the street and someone comes up to you and uh, says, hey, what about that? That was incredible, that bit of information about so and so and so and so. And I reckon it's... A, and people have come up with the wrong impressions quite often. It's also... Um um, uh, you're at the opposite ends of the spectrum here when you're talking about uh, the written word and the spoken word. When something is said, even though you put down the words, they don't necessarily take on the same meaning because it's people's interpretations of what they read. Yes, yes, that, that's so. And, of course, newspapers aren't able to put emphasis on words. I mean, mm. the newsprint appears in newspapers just as straight words. And things can be said in different ways. Um, in a courtroom, um, one picks up a different impression um, to what uh, one reads in a newspaper. And uh, um, writing the book, I have tried to convey as best as I can um, people's feelings without necessarily commenting. Uh, but, uh, when on the subject of the media, the media seems to have swung here from one side to the other. After the first inquiry, um, they said there wasn't any case. 
and everybody came out with these things, newspaper stories and things saying that, well, they were probably guilty. Now, uh, Lindy Chamberlain has been found guilty and sentenced yes. to life in prison and hard labor. And now everyone seems to be on the other side of the swing defending mm. her. Uh, yes, that, that, that's very interesting. I think um, human behavior is always interesting when these things happen, Don. But um, I don't want to sort of sound as though I'm defending newspapers. It sounds as though because I'm working for, I work for a newspaper that I am defending them. But yeah. um, I think newspapers tend to ride along with um, the tide of fact as it's presented to them. Now, when this story first broke, um, and reports filtered through from Ayers Rock that... Uh, this is the disappearance. This is the disappearance. Right, yeah. The story first broke, the, the, um, as I heard it, uh, a child, a little baby, nine weeks old, had been taken from a tent by a wild dog. Um, you know, that to me as a newspaper man was, was quite a story. Sure. Um, then you sort of, uh, you read the reports in the newspapers, which were... Pretty straightforward. Um, the facts were reported that a baby had been re reported missing. Um, the words of the parents were recorded. Uh, um, what, whatever they said, of course. I mean, newspapers were clamouring for information, and uh, what better than uh, from the from the lips of the parents? How much influence do you think that media coverage of that disappearance would have affected uh, a jury or a, a courtroom case? Well. Um, it shouldn't have affected a jury in any way, of course, because, um, as we all know, Don, uh, a jury must only listen to the evidence which is presented to a court. <laughs> <laughs> I often wonder how in a courtroom, when someone says, strike that from the record, how you're supposed to strike that from your, from mind, your mind as well. Yeah, yes, you know? I, yes, I know. It, it is a very difficult area. Yeah. And um, as, I, as I mentioned, this, this case has had unprecedented coverage in the press. And I don't think that there was anyone in Australia who had not heard of the famous Dingle Baby case. Yeah. And selecting a jury um, was a very, very difficult thing to do because, um, uh, you know, unless you sort of closed yourself off in a coal cellar somewhere, um, you would have bound to have heard of the case. Were you there during the selection of jury? No, I wasn't you there wasn't. for the selection but how many, of jury. But how many, I never read about that, how many were, how many were actually... Uh, uh, well, they had a large number. In fact, um, at one stage, uh, 300 people had been set aside for jury selection. But, you see, it comes down to the defence um, uh, selecting mm. or picking mm. the people that they would like on the jury. That's, huh. um, you know, normal court practice. Mm. Uh, just jumping along for a minute, uh, the, the members of the press, the fellows that you were with, of course, um, what was the feeling in the courtroom uh, as to the outcome? As to the outcome, um, well, we all, talk, we all talked among ourselves, um, obviously, you know, you don't just sort of leave a court and just sort of go away and forget about it. Um, you go out for a meal and you discuss that day's evidence and you discuss it in, in the light of all the ev other evidence which has come forward um, in the past. Um, I, I would say that um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of my colleagues, were showing a lot of sympathy um, for the Chamberlains, uh, certainly for Michael. Um, and personally, uh, you know, I felt, felt very, very sorry for him because he seemed to have been carrying a great deal of the burden. Yeah. What about the outcome, though? I mean, did you, did your, you and your peers, did you feel it was going to be, it was going to be a guilty? I think um, it's uh, in the light of the appeal. Uh, obviously, I have to be very careful what I say. Yes, uh, I understand. Um, yeah. But, but um, I think in terms of the court evidence, uh, I was very surprised by the guilty verdict. Mm. Um, the judge had made uh, several comments and emphasised to the jury that. Uh, they had to be satisfied beyond all reasonable doubt. And um, I and... Am I to gather from that that you don't feel that it was beyond a reasonable doubt? That, that's so. I, I feel that enough doubt had been thrown into the case uh, not to convict. Hmm. But, I mean, that's only my personal opinion, and I'm not qualified, I'm not, I'm not a juror, I'm not a judge. You're just giving... But you're giving an opinion from having been there and listened to the evidence that, and what that, went that, on. That's, that's right. What, what was the atmosphere like waiting for that verdict? I mean, it must have been electric in that point. Well, it, it was quite horrifying. Um, I don't think I would ever want to sit in a, in a courtroom like that again. Um, I've covered, you know, a number of trials at London's famous Old Bailey. I've been involved with families who uh, um, have been... Uh, had relatives charged with murder and um, I've sat in the court and I've you know waited for verdicts to come forward and I haven't been moved at all but um, on this occasion 
I found it was very, very difficult to get a note down. Um, I mean, I like to take pride in my shorthand, and uh, mm. in fact, um, I read a book by Morris Kligman, one of your uh, compatriots, uh, Don, in fact, who's, a, who's an American shorthand writer. So I've got all these wonderful sh- outlines for getting things down quickly. <laughs> yeah. um, but in fact, it turned out I, I just couldn't get, to get the words down, and uh, mm. I checked with um, one of my colleagues afterwards, and uh, I found that he also had not got the words down. In other words, we were all emotionally involved in this verdict. Did you, um, uh, there were a lot of rumours, or at least from what I read, there was a lot of rumours passing around about what could have transpired here. Uh, rumours about the uh, cults, uh, things like that, uh, sacrifices, that sort of stuff. Yes. Uh, did, was, that, was that talk amongst journalists? Uh? I think um, there was certainly a lot of talk among the public, and I, I suppose journalists themselves um, raised the possibility of um, cults and so on, because None of us really understood the um, teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Of did you go and seek that out, however? I mean, did anybody go to find out about the Chamberlains? And yes, I, I made a lot of inquiries about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and, and there is nothing, there is nothing in their teachings which talks about sacrifices. I mean, that, that's just a lot of rubbish. Mm. Um, what they do believe in, and I think this is where the Chamberlains gained their comfort after the child disappeared, mm. uh, um, was the fact that uh, in the resurrection, um, children are raised by holy angels into the arms of their mothers. This is what the Seventh-day Adventists believe. Mm. They believe that um, once someone dies, the whole body goes into a state of soul sleep. In other words, um, most of us in the Christian world believe that you know you die and your soul goes off to heaven. Mm. The Seventh-day Adventists believe that your soul remains there with your body until the resurrection, and then all the, uh, the Christian people are raised mm. and um, everyone is reunited. Uh, relatives are reunited, loved ones are reunited. Do you think this appeal will be as, as sensational as this trial was? I certainly think it will be and I don't think we've heard the end of this story. It's a sensational story. Um, Did you meet them, by the way? Have you met uh, the Chamberlains? Have you talked with them? Very interesting enough, I've shaken hands with Michael Chamberlain almost at the beginning and um, he didn't want to talk to me. I could. I mean, that was pretty obvious. He didn't want to be bothered by anyone. Mm. So I felt that I should leave him alone. Um, but I also flew back from Darwin on the same plane as Michael Chamberlain. And um, I reached across and, and shook his hand as I was leaving the plane. And I think I was probably the last person to shake his hand uh, mm. before um, he, he went off into uh, seclusion at the Seventh-day Adventist College. Um, and the change in Michael Chamberlain was mm. remarkable. And... Um, I feel that whatever may have happened on that spooky night um, two years ago at Ayers Rock, um, you know, the man still deserves a great deal of sympathy. Mm. Well, obviously, you'll be following up the rest of this. This is the book. It's called The Zaria. Uh, there's several books out. This is the simplest one to remember because it's the one with just the one name on it. And uh, it tells a story. You tell a story very well in here, by the way. And uh, congratulations on a very, very good writing job. Uh, well, I, I think uh, people want to find out the ins and outs. Before. they got a good opportunity to find it out here. Thanks for Thanks coming in and joining us, Richard. Very nice to talk to you. Stay there. We shall return. Oh, uh, Dame Edna Evans is waiting in London, by the way. We'll talk with her. I was on what? that side. You stand on that side. No, he says I stay here. He told me to sit. See what I mean? It's him again. If he's not winding us up, he's ruining the commercials. Come here. Yes? Drum roll. Uh, Whatever. Uh, Ta da! Look at that. Look at that acne. All over the place. No, don't. Do yes. that. That's not right. Did you know that this is your last chance to drive like a star by winning this classic Rolls Royce and TV Week scratch match and uh, win contest? Well, I didn't know that. It certainly is. <laughs> or you could win one of these windsurfer sailboards. Yes. Can't you just see me sailing around Port Phillip Brady on one of the... I beg your pardon? Port, 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 Port Phillip Bay on oh, one of these. <laughs> Actually, hello, hello, here's Philip now. How are you, darling? Hi. Good to see you. I could see sailing around on one of those. Yes, but not one for of these. sure. Yeah, right. What's your name? Jane. Well, Bert's my name. Nice to meet you. This is Hello, my, Jane. Very this nice. Is my don't, let go, don't let go. You'll tilt. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and there's an AM FM Kevset Radio from GE, cinema passes to the film Annie, and records from the KTEL Platinum Picks collection. Mm, that get, includes the ink spots. Get your, <laughs> get your scratch and match win coupon in this week's TV time. And there's uh, Mass TV Week. Sorry. 
TV Times. I tell you, that's all finished. Our TV Times went broke. No, it didn't. Our oh, TV did Times it? finished. Shh, shh. My God, what a night. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm looking at the Hang on, wait a minute. I'll wind you up again. <laughs> okay, There's also ahead. match star Alan Alder on the cover. That's Mr. Actor here. Right, right. Read how. <laughs> <laughs> Read how disaster hit the filming of the final MASH episode. And which cop shop star is getting married? I don't know which one is getting married. I don't know. But no idea. Okay. Who's leaving sons and daughters? Is Graham Kennedy really returning to TV? You'll find all the answers in this week's TV Week. There's Dynasty's Pamela Sue Martin on love, marriage, and stardom. A preview of the new TV shows for 83, a Scott Bayo pinup, and lots more. You know Scott who is? Scott Never have no clue. Who's Scott Bayo? You know the kid, uh, Chachi. Isn't that Chachi? Scott Bayo, yeah, Chachi, you know from Happy Days? Oh, sure, well, he of course and, I do. He and the sister have a series they're doing now. Great. It's called uh, uh, Jane, uh, what's the difference? I never miss it. Never see it, but never miss it. <laughs> TV Week, great family reading every week. And it's out now, isn't it? Yeah, don't miss it. Certainly. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Look at that. Ah, uh, that sort of wacky group Skids are back with us tonight. Uh, they're currently performing their new show called Slippery When Wet at the Comedy Cafe in Melbourne. They're going to do a medley of big band hits for us tonight. Will you welcome back Skids? Here they are. Look out. <laughs> Just to watch you going and what you're doing tonight. I'm yours. You're in the movie, cause you're feeling just right. Me too. How's about a corner with the table for two? Sounds fine. And the music's mellow with some gear and you blue. Slow down. Down to dance around to with a blue attitude. You've got, got to do some dance to get in the mood. Just to watch you call and that's your timely idea. Something swing a dealer would be good to my ear. Everybody must agree the dance is charms. When you have a certain one, you love and you're wrong. Step it out with you, be a sweet little loot. A builder up that put me in the mood. In the mood. Ooh. I did have got it in the mood. Ooh. You real was spotted.
too. How about it? All right. Good on you, kid. Okay. Thanks very much, kids. Job well done. Really nice stuff. Um, the news reached us this week that at uh, last, the long-awaited and much-heralded publication, uh, Dame Edna's Bedside Companion, has at last hit the bookshelves. Uh, the book, a conglomerate of wisdom, experience, practicality, garnished with a smattering of the erotic, is not your usual Dame Edna fair. But it demonstrates graphically the boldness and foresight of this adventurous <laughs> in recognizing and anticipating trends long before they appear, and once again setting a standard that others are hard pressed to surpass. Uh, Dame Edna is waiting for us now, so from her boudoir and bed in the heart of London, where she has graciously consented to talk to us, ladies and gentlemen, Dame Edna Everett. Cheer yeah, right. Hello, my love. Hello, John. Oh, listen to that applause for you, my dear. They miss you. Hello. <laughs> Hello, viewers. Oh. <laughs> oh, lovely. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Well, welcome home, uh, Dame Edna, if only by the satellite. Thank you, Don. Why do we always have to go on meeting like this? Oh, I know. <laughs> Isn't it spooky? 13,000 miles, and I'm being bounced off a star, aren't I? Isn't it spooky? Yes, it's wonderful. You're going, you've gone 12,000 12, miles up into space and back down again, and you don't even feel it. I hope, though, that we can meet in the flesh soon, Don, because I miss being on the show physically with you. I miss the way you squeeze girls' little cheeks and touch them. <laughs> and <rope> them. <laughs> I envied little Marsha Hines last week when you gave her a cuddle like that. Yes, yes. So, I did. I thought, I uh, wish I was Marsha, but then I'd need quite a few little hormones, wouldn't I, to turn them Yes, into yes, just a, <laughs> just a few. I, are, those, um, are those matching swans on those glasses? Yes, you know, didn't they do a clever technical thing, viewers? Yes. Because they got the cover of my new bestseller and then they sat me up in bed and they merged and all that happened in outer space. I don't begin to understand it, Don Lane, it, it, but I think it's a tribute to you that you arranged it. I think it is. Because you, <laughs> yes. took, you took a big salary cut to make this possible, Don, didn't you? Yes, yes I did, as a matter you of fact. You didn't know it, but you did. I know. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to forget it so fast. Uh, tell, me about, <laughs> tell me about the book now. Uh, the question that comes to one's mind immediately is why did you choose to write this book? Well, most of the prophets... First of all, I have to say this, Don, that... I know that there's a lot of women, not only in your studio, but all over Australia, in fact, probably all over the world, tuning into this satellite broadcast. No. Probably Eskimos. Uh, sitting in the little igloos listening to this. Yes. Who, who have suffered from insomnia. You know, ladies, what it's like when you wake up in the middle of the night and you want to reach for a bit of quick consolation. Well, this is somewhere... <laughs> this is something you can put your hand on that's all to yes. safe. And it's not habit-forming, remember that. Oh. It's a lovely thing to dip into. Yes. It's a cure for insomnia in itself because you, if by the time you're halfway through it, if you haven't dropped off, you get your money back. <laughs> it's got lots of... It's full of hints. Uh, oh, and helpful ones, too. Dreams. Helpful ones. Oh, I'm glad absolutely. you added yes, that, Don. Yes, yes. I should point out something, though, and may I say this on your program? Sure. That the boat that has supplies of this book for all the bookshops of Australia has had an accident and it's not going to be in the shops for about two weeks. Can you wait? I don't know. Can you I wait? I hate... I hate... <laughs> can you, audience? No, as a matter of fact, part of the audience ran out the door now because they thought they may be available this very minute. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so this is a bit of a teaser, this one. The yes. other reason I wrote the book, Don, is that, as you probably know, I think I've told Bert this privately and he's passed it on to you, I'm an extremely rich woman. I need never work again. My accountants have told me that <laughs> if I earn another cent, I'll be in a tax bracket which no one would envy. 
Right. So, and, and you know, with a retrospectivity that's coming in. Yes, I understand. As a matter of fact, I believe the doctor said to Malcolm Fraser that his backache is going to be made retrospective. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, um, I'm giving all the proceeds of this book to a, a charity, a special charity, mm. that's called Rape. <laughs> rape. All the proceeds of this book, not every single cent goes to rape. Now, their initials. Rape is the Royal Australian Prostate Endowment. Rape. Obviously, so, this has something to do with uh, Norm. Yes, my husband. He is right. the world's most famous prostate sufferer. Right, as our yes, I know. understand that, yes. Yes. That's why he's not in this lovely bed with me now. I was Heavens interested to read, by the way, on the back of the jack... Oh. <laughs> I feel I should explain yes, I think maybe to we our should. viewers. Does that plug why in, I've by the way? This... <laughs> well, no. This Livia Queen. I don't want. No, no, please, viewers. I don't want anyone putting two and two together and making five. Yes. You see this blender? Can the camera see this blender beside my bed? You see? Oh, yes. Look. Can you hear it? Yes. That's parsnip pulp. I pop, I pop a parsnip in there at, in the wee small hours of the morning, mm. and I'm never without a little bit. The pulp of a parsnip is wonderful for the skin, Don. Right, I know. So I never sleep without a couple of old parsies tucked away somewhere. <laughs> and if I wake, if I wake up in the middle of the night with with skin starvation, yes. Then I just pop a little parsnip in my blender, slap on a bit of pulp. And I'm as gorgeous as ever. I am. You remember that. Um, I believe you've got the odd thing in your bedside drawer. Don't yes, you? yes, I do. <laughs> only, only I won't put my hand in it. You see, that's. Uh, but can I, can Not I, in the blender. No. <laughs> can I? Uh, you my devote, husband. You devote a chapter. Oh yes, we we're going to talk about on the back cover of this, on the jacket of this book. I see where it says, uh, Lord Everidge. I didn't know that Norm was a lord. Oh yes, he is. If I'm a dame, he has to be a lord. Oh, I'm not I... sure that it's. I'm not sure that technically it's correct, frankly. Right. But I, uh, the Queen herself referred to him as Lord Everidge when we were chatting the other day. Right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this is an exclusive for your show, Don, and yeah. oh, bless your heart, going to this expense. It's, it's costing about $1,000 a second, this satellite program, by the way. Is it? And I'm very honoured. It is. You didn't oh. know that, did no, you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. So, um, I asked the Queen, I said, is it correct to call him Lord Everidge? She says, look, don't ask too many questions. She said, I said, I'm going on the Don Lane show and they're going to have cameras in my bedroom for the first time. And she said, well, it's not a first for you, Dame Edna. She said, you'd be surprised what I've had in my bedroom. <laughs> you know, she was referring to that little intruder. Yes. You know, and I said, well, she said, I said, what were the Siggies doing? You know, she had the Siggies in her bedside drawer. Yes. I hope that she wasn't a secret smoker. She said, I always keep them in case anyone comes up the drain pipe. <laughs> and I need to stall them. You see, well, she stalled that intruder. Mm -hmm. And while he was lighting his cigarette, he was a rat bag, of course, I need hardly say. She had her hands under the bedclothes finding her bleeper. She was looking for her bleeper under the bedclothes, but I said to her, I said, my darling, uh, Elizabeth, I call her, I said, <laughs> I said, when that happened, I said, you remember that incident, Don? You know yes, the one I do, I'm with the man on the end of the I bedroom. said, where was Prince Philip? And she said, oh, he was up the passage. He was. He lit his bedroom. Yeah, it's just down is, there. Oh, it's some minutes away, up the passage from hers. Right, yes. And uh, that's well, why he wasn't aware of it. May she I get back to... She was leaping him. And, yes, yes. May I, may I just get back to the... I just, I just wish to get back to the book because uh, where they're sort of giving me Look, all sorts of things. we don't need to promote it. We don't. Well, I'd like to ask you a couple of things about it. Just one thing, which is sort of revolutionary. This is a specially treated jacket because there is a lot in here about stains, bed stains, and you give a lot yes. of advice how to get rid of them and so forth. Now, look at this, viewers. Look at this. This jacket of my book. Now, it's going to be on every bedside table in Australia when it comes out in a couple of weeks, and you can order it from the bookseller. Now, here's a bit of Niv. Look. You see, you can get things on books at night, can't you, when you're reaching for them? Mm. And, you know, or a little bit of tea, a little bit of cup of tea on this book. Now, right. all you have to do is just get your bed clothes. <laughs> well, that does it.
That Isn't really, that wonderful? I think that's a very, very practical demonstration on exactly what it does. May I ask you about uh, just one last question. By uh, A lot of women are, are troubled by sleep. A lot of people, naturally, are troubled by sleep, as you said before. But you devote a whole chapter to dropping off. I do. Yes, and there is, well, there is advice for several different uh, types of people and, and ways that you can drop off. The arts of dropping off, yes. Yes. What, <laughs> what is the leprosy method, for example? <laughs> the leprosy method? Well, that's a wonderful way of dropping off leprosy. Oh, no, no, I mean the method. Right, yes. What you do is when you're lying there in torment, you know, and not even Hal Todd is on the television. <laughs> <laughs> friend of Howard's. Um, what you do is lie there and you talk to each little part of your anatomy in turn. You say, go to sleep, little finger. Go to sleep, second little finger. Go to sleep, lips. Go to sleep, lobes. Go to sleep, chest buttons. You know? <laughs> go to sleep. And you move down the body. Right. And and you, you talk to each part of your anatomy, Don. In your case, you'd probably have a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. and then it drops off. Uh, now, I mean, it, it drops off to sleep. Yes, I And understand. you never, you, you just, it just say, go to sleep to every part of your anatomy. That's the leprosy method. And what is the fanning another, method? The fanning method, yes, I'll show you. Yes, that's quite delightful. <laughs> now, you can fan yourself to sleep. I don't know if you're aware of that. No. What you do is lie in the bed. I'm going to give a demonstration on a satellite. Isn't this Isn't incredible? this wonderful? Yes. <laughs> you lie in bed and you hold the bed clothes like that. Can you still hear me when I do that? Yes. And all you do is this. <laughs> you keep doing that. Just... <laughs> and, you know, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Does it work? You, why are they applauding, Don? Oh, they, they, enjoyed you, the, they enjoyed the demonstration. Tremendous. Does it work, the fanning method? What you have to remember, method? though, yes. there's a watch point. Yes. And that is that if your husband or your bridesmaid, in my case, I spend a lot of time in bed with Madge Allsop. Yes. Because she's my companion and she's a lonely old thing. I rescued her from the roof of the garage when she was sleepwalking once. I said, well, you can come in for a cuddle tonight, and she's been there ever since. Yes. But if you're doing the fanning method, make sure that your bed, your little sleeping partner, isn't on the hard-boiled egg diet. Right. Because one spark, one spark from the bedside blender and your boudoir could be an inferno. It's <laughs> David, now, I am coming to London uh, around the 2nd or 3rd of December. I will try to look you up and say hello. Thank you for joining Lovely. us by satellite. God bless you This is all. the book. I hope it's a hit. Goodbye, my love. Thank you, Goodbye. And if you're still listening, thank you, Dame Edna, wherever you are. Okay, uh, international singing star and recording artist and uh, veteran performer, Vic Damone, is back in Australia on tour. Uh, for those of you up in New South Wales, uh, you'll be able to see him. He'll be at South Sydney Juniors for the next two weekends. That's my club. That's the place I love the best. Uh, Bankstown Sports Club this Thursday. Wentworthville Leagues Club this Sunday. Uh, when I tell you this, this is the truth. Frank Sinatra once said that this man has the purest voice in the business. He is still, after about 30 years in the business, one of the most popular singers in the United States. A butte guy to boot, and boy, you can learn an awful lot just being around this guy. What a tone. He's doing a lovely Cole Porter song for us tonight. Easy to love. Will you welcome back Vic Damone here. <laughs> So easy to idolize all others above. So worth 
the yearning for So swell to keep all the home fires burning for mm, We'd be so grand at the game So carefree together that it does See the shame that you, you can't see your future with me cause you'd be oh, so easy to Dead. Dead. Oh, no. isn't it funny? Yes. Oh, I can't believe it. Do you know about Dame Edna Everett? You've never no, seen her in the States, time. have you? No, nothing about first her. First time. Yeah. You're, uh, I understand you're a pretty keen golfer. Besides coming over here on concert, well, you run around and do some golf. Yeah, I love to play. You ought to play golf. No, 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 not me, no. You see, if you, you played golf, you'd yeah. grow. Would I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would it help? How about his height? What are you about, six foot? Six foot four. Six but four. I'll slump down for you, Big. You you're dirty. You wouldn't I'll do that for me, would you? <laughs> no. For my Italian friend from yeah. America, I'm going to do anything. I like I'm five foot one next to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are. Oh, don't do that. I'm to teasing. Me. Okay, we're going to do a. Are, are we going to sing? Yeah, you're going to allow me to do this song with you. You know, the only reason I come to Australia is yeah. so I can get a singing lesson from you. You liar, you. No, I need it. Let's it's do a, it. You want to sing? Yes, I will. Okay, I will let's do it with sing. you. Graham, anytime. Right. Now, don't screw it up. I will. <laughs> We got a barrel of money. Yeah. Maybe we're ragged and funny, but we'll travel along singing a song side by side. It's yours. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking. Now heaven knows anything goes. Good authors, too, who once knew better words Now only use four-letter words Writing prose, anything goes The world's gone mad today And good's bad today And black's white today And day's night today And most prize today That women prize today are just Silly jiggle Hey, we don't know what's coming to 
tomorrow Or maybe it's trouble and sorrow But we'll travel the road Sharing our load Side by side Okay Gray skies are gonna clear up So's my acne Put on a happy face Brush off the clouds and cheer up Come on, put on a happy face Take off that gloomy mask of tragedy It's not your style Shape up You look so good that you'll be glad That you decided to smile Oh yeah Pick out a peasant outlook Peasant? No, pleasant Oh, pleasant Stick out that Sicilian chin Sicilian <laughs> Wipe off that fat chaperoot look. I got it. Slap on a happy grin. A little advice. And spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy, ha happy face. Yeah. Shall I take it? Through all kinds of weather. Oh, it's got rhythm too, you know. What if the sky should fall? Oh, you, just as long as we're together It doesn't really matter at all When we've all had our troubles and parted We'll be the same as we started Just traveling along Singing a song This is, uh, this is Kathy Ellie, and it's difficult to believe, but Kathy had a weight problem before going to Gloria Marshall. You did, didn't you? Yes. After having two children, I found that my swim fitting clothes no longer fitted me. Uh -huh. I was a size 16. There you uh, are there. Yes, I didn't like the way I looked there. And I'm the dress is felt. Was it, was it um, difficult losing the weight? Did you find it difficult? Initially, yes. I tried other diets, but nothing worked for very uh -huh. long. Then I tried Gloria Marshall, and I found the staff and equipment there really helpful. They got the system, don't they? How much did you lose? Uh? In the first three months, I lost 40 pounds. I've now lost 50 pounds. Well, let's stand up over here. We'll have a good look. We'll see what it's like. There you are. Okay, do you worry about putting the weight back on uh, after you do that? No, I eat sensibly now. And I find that being healthier and fitter, I can keep up with two children a lot easier. Yeah, that is the tough part, keeping up with your two children, too. That's right. Sure. Yes. <laughs> All right, I, I think it's time for you to do something about your figure, if you think so. Gloria Marshall can help you, as is proven here and many, many other times when we do these commercials. So why don't you call the salon nearest you for a free figure analysis and trial. Remember that? Free figure analysis and trial and treatment, okay? Remember, results start the moment you do. Get off it, on it, and make a phone call. We'll be back. Don't you go away. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, if any one or any two individuals can lay claim to a big chunk of credit for the international success of the Australian film industry, it'd have to be actor Mel Gibson and producer-director Peter Weir. Uh, besides the individual things they have done uh, and been successful at, they have now teamed up again for what promises to be another hit film. This one shot in the Philippines. Uh, totally financed by America, but using Australian crews and actors, another breakthrough. It's called The Year of Living Dangerously. Uh, let me tell you about the plot. Uh, the place is Indonesia in the riot-torn weeks leading up to the overthrow of the Sukarno regime. Now, Mel plays a journalist who seeks to make it big 
Uh, he sees the riots as his chance, and along with his midget cameraman friend, he throws himself into the center of the riots to capture them on film. Christ, what do we do now? I think we get out. Pleasure to talk to these two blokes. Welcome them back. We have Peter Weir and Mel Gibson. Here they are. Again, fellas, about to kick off something else. Uh, we talked to you about this film a couple of months ago, yeah, I think, right. when you yeah. first got back. Uh, it's, been, it's now been previewed in America, they tell me. Is that right? Yeah, I took it over about um, eight weeks ago, seven weeks ago, uh, yeah. for the studio. It's an MGM film. And uh, fairly tense sort of screening, naturally enough. And uh, it went very well. What do, what do you mean when you say tense screening? Uh? Well, I think any screening for the investor after you spend all the dough is a tense Oh, time. you mean they put up the money, you shot this film, and this is the first time they've seen the That's end result? Right, yeah. Oh, that and is was, nervous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was in the, in the MGM, on the MGM lot. Yeah. And uh, you just can't help but be aware of the history of MGM pictures. And so there in the, um, in the vast sort of MGM auditorium with about six executives sitting there, you know, in a 2,000-seat seat theater, yeah. you really start to sweat. And as the lion comes up and so on, you wonder whether you're going to sort of live up to the tradition of very fine films they've made. Or they were going to say, deport Weir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, out. put him out of here, out forever, <laughs> yes. What was the reaction? Good? It was very good, yeah. yeah. Comparing with, you know, people who've gone through studios at very difficult times. Yeah. Very difficult time making this film, no? Uh, what was it? There was... Uh, well, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> show no, him the truth. <clears throat> All right, shall I tell him the truth? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, there were threats, I heard. Uh, oh, threats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was uh, offered several life assurance of policies on the phone and uh, yeah. um, asked if I was brave and things like that, at uh, which point I said no and hung up. But, uh, Did they know about your Mad Max reputation at that time? Did they know that that was you? The or? Filipinos? Yeah. I'm not sure if... Uh, oh, yeah, they did the first one, didn't they? Right? Yeah. yeah. But I, that was not connected yeah. to the death. Oh, I was just going to say, you yeah. know, sometimes that might have a rub off, you know? Nah, nothing at all. Yeah. No, it was some sort of Muslim group. Like no. And it wasn't serious. Oh, right. oh yeah. <laughs> it really wasn't. Tell me. <laughs> well, I heard that you left early because you did think it was serious. Is well, that not true? You know, no, the, it's true. Yeah. What's the point yeah. of cracking it over, yeah. uh, you know, celluloid? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's right, too, yeah. yeah. If, it's, if it's your life or the film, I'll take the film or something. It's like those guys that always say, uh, the show must go on, you know? And you're coughing and sputtering in the wings. You say, why? <laughs> I'm dying, you know? Well, I spent six or seven weeks sleeping in the bathtub and... Uh... <laughs> sleeping or slipping? No, sleeping. Sleeping. Oh, oh, no, so. And what's this about Elvis Presley's plane? Uh, is this in the film? Yeah, the, no, well, one of the problems that happened when, the, uh, when we did have to leave because of the, uh, these um, threats was that we lost Elvis's plane. His plane has ended up in Manila. Is that right? And we needed a, a, a 707 aircraft. Yeah. So we, we actually ended up with the Prime Minister's plane, I must say. Is we shot in Sydney in, the, in that airport scene. Is that right? Yeah, so we, we <laughs> changed it. It was very kind, thank you. Get the seat that gave him the bag back. It might. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's um, take a, uh, a look at this. You know, this is another character that uh, Mel Gibson plays. 
It's not like you are in real life, but you are. All these roles you always get seem to be these really cocky guys, you know? Oh, this one. Well, he's uh, particularly uh, abrasive, I suppose. Um, a, good, a good deal older, yeah. um, which is, uh, I mean, a maturity gap. Try and jump that. Yeah. This man, help me, he's older. <laughs> yes, make up, make. he would understand you more than he would. What a, so there's a scene we've got here with you and another bloke in a, in a pu uh, pub or a low dive or something. You That's go to right. start a dance. Who's the other fellow? His name is Michael Murphy, oh. uh, and he's a very funny guy. Is he American or Australian? He's an American guy. An American actor? Yeah. And what is the purpose? What are you doing in this scene that we're going to show uh, in this club? Uh, well, we're actually uh, celebrating his transfer from uh, Jakarta to Saigon which is where all the real stories are, in quotes. Yeah. Um, that was where it was all happening then, in the hot 1965 cycle. They're kind of competitors, these yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. And a little, little military in interve intervention here. Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Have a look. Here's a scene. <laughs> Adios. Best bouncer in the business. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, so uh, you know, I have to. We have to move on here, and I want to wish you luck. I understand the film doesn't open for another month or so. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Seventeenth. So oh, there it is. World premiere. Adelaide, December the 9th, and other states, December the seventeenth. I cross my fingers for you, Peter, because you. you know what a big fan I am. You and Mel as well. This is just one last question. Um, there are rumors around, we hear reports, that there are offers for you to do motion pictures in the United States, amongst which are Raiders of the Lost Ark 2. Is that true? Well, it's, um, there's a lot of uh, scripts falling from the sky at the moment. It's one of those times. I mean, uh, I'm fortunate. Yeah, and sure. I, I'm, I'm glad that that's happening. Uh, at the same time, I have to be wise about choices, you know, very selective and things. And, uh, have you made any yet? No, I haven't. Well, I'm hang in. As long as, they keep, as long as they keep offering, kid, you got nothing to worry about. You know what I mean? <laughs> Peter, thanks a lot for coming. Night, nice Thank to see you. And all the best of luck. Thank you, too. Okay. Ta -da. We'll be back. We got the wheel, I think. And Virgil. And more stuff. Whatever. Second last time in 1982, it's Don's Wheel. And tonight, the major prize, one of three cars valued between $7,000 and $8,000, a Gemini, a Mazda, or a Sigma, from Gary and Warren Smith, Oakley, Mulgrave, and Sunshine. Gary and Warren say, underpay. And one unit in the Tiki Village Timeshare Trust, valued at $5,400, normally available by prospectus. You could be part owner in a luxury holiday resort at the new Tiki Village International Complex on Campbell Avenue, under construction now in the heart of Surfers Paradise, with the right to one full week's holiday for you and your family year after year. Also tonight, win a remote control VCR and five Thorn EMI video cassettes from Radio Rentals, Australia's largest TV video rental company. Also on the wheel, cash. It's $1,200 cash from Kmart, your fashion saving place. And a week's holiday for two at Greenmount Tourist Resort, flying with TAA to Coolangatta, the beautiful end of the Gold Coast. And now to introduce tonight's noteworthy nut, welcome Bert Newton. Watching? Yes. Peter Weir is here, and he, and he said he might be casting for a new motion picture. Really? Yes. But I mean, Mel Gibson and Jack Thompson and Brian Brown. I mean, they can't get old. They're you. getting old now. What do you mean? They're getting They're old. They're getting old. They might want someone new, someone they want new blood with sex appeal and 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 and, and, and what do you call do, it in do, French? Do one, of, do one of your lines from Fatty Finn. From what Fatty are, Finn. One of those, like you know, the ones where they they really where well, they it say, meant something and, with and the they, eyes. And they put you up for right. the award. Right. Okay. Come on. Would you pass the salt, please? That's terrific. Do you like that eye? <laughs> but it's feeling. No, no, see, it's not the. It's the eyes. I'll do it again for you. Yes. 
Would you pass the salt, please? See the eyes? You <laughs> act with the That's eyes. They say you. you act with the eyes, and you the could body. see right there that anyone looking into your eyes would have wanted to pass you the salt. I was, <laughs> I was sitting in my dressing room this evening Good. watching with a, a, what, you with a couple of guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, from the show, and everyone was saying how good you look. You've had your hair cut shorter. Yeah. And you've lost Before some weight. Before I go away, yeah. Mm. I lost weight by a ton. I don't Nothing know how I lost special's it. happening over Christmas, New Year. You going anywhere or doing... <laughs> no, I'm just asking as a friend, because there's a... Well, as a friend, I would tell you. <laughs> Mind your own business. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything you want. You just look too Who's good. Who's the contestant? Well, I feel great. Yes. It's, it's one of the best times you... of my life. Are you happy? Absolutely. <laughs> Thrilled, the light of the night. <laughs> He's like a nervous Let me mother. ask you one thing. Him and Patty always say, when are you, yes. you getting married? Uh, but you are happy. Yes, yeah. I'm thrilled. Is it a girl, a female? No, unfortunately. Oh, it's a sheep. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. At your stage well, of the game, you, know, just, you can't be a snob. You know what they say, one U-turn deserves another. Would you you know what I don't sorry believe you'd say I'm that. Sorry, would sorry. you like to meet our nut tonight? I certainly would. You look happy in the eyes. I'm thrilled. Oh, you got no idea what's going on. You would call me, wouldn't you, and ask me to fly over or whatever? Absolutely. I, I thought I might find you there. Because I usually might... stroll along the beach at the Kahala Hilton, and there you are, sitting <laughs> yeah, there. That's right. This is the only man goes to pays. God knows how much for a vacation, and sits on the beach with a shirt on and trousers well, and, well, I've, I've and a beard. I've, well, I've got it because the doctor said I'm not allowed to, to be under the sun. He's got a feeling I wasn't born under the sun. <laughs> well, the trouble with you is when you lay on your back, there's a lot of parts that are really too exactly. close. What yeah. you, I beg your pardon. What do you mean by that? Too close to the sun. Oh, oh, I see. Just, yeah. Would you like to meet? Humor. Would you like to meet our? My, my humor. Would you like to meet our uh, our Newton's nut for this yes, evening? Isn't that wonderful news? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's Brendan Ford from Mount Waverley. Brandon, this is Don. Nice to see you. Brandon, we have a little time for yeah. so we've got to sort of go oh, along. So you tell Bert about what to do. Yeah, he's from Mount Waverley, is Brandon. What are you going to do for us, Brandon? I'm going to spin around the floor and make a fool of myself. Right, OK. Yeah, would you like... Fool yourself. Would you like... <laughs> we get paid for it. Yes, right, right. Right. Would you like us to do anything for you? Yeah, move back. You get certainly. Out the way. And <laughs> right. give me a clap. And give you a clap, right, OK. And, and, we, and this is just what you do. You roll around the floor and make a fool of yourself. Yeah, in a Is it too music, Brandon, or you just do it? Do it too music. OK, right, huh? Right, good enough for you, good enough for me. Oh, gonna... Yes, I'll move that back. Oh, no way. Oh, we'll move it right yeah. out of the way. Sure. What the hell? Would you like the audience out? Yeah. Here we go. Hit it, fellas. Hit it, hit it fellas. <laughs> I mean, that looks much easier, Don, than it really is. Actually, uh, a lot of people may not realize this, but that's one of the steps that Bert taught the Bolshoi Ballet. Yes, and it's a very hard step to do, isn't it? That's very, very clever. You, pup? I don't know. I've never done it before. I'd be dead if I'd done that. <laughs> what? Haven't you really? You said he's never done it before. Is that I said right? He said, I don't know. I've never done it before. Fantastic. What number do you want, Brendan? Uh, oh, by the way, here's $100 uh, oh, for you. Oh, 15. Brendan, he's going to give you 100 Hold down the noise. Yeah. Well, it'll be half a moment. This is, part of, this is part of the money. This is part of the money. And he... that is tax free and not retrospective. That's part of the money. That's part of the money he won on the Melbourne Cup. What, <laughs> what number would you like, Brendan? Uh, 13. Sorry. Number 13. And it's on it to start with already. I just moved it there. I That's why it's on it. it. Okay, down that way and good luck, Brendan. Brendan, you get this marvellous windsheeter, which says, as you can see, I was a Newton's nut on the Don Lane show. And thanks for being a sport and sending in a letter and everything. Oh, well, no, good sport. Right. Number sucky. 12, you engaged or married or anything, Brendan? Ah, no. Well, this will come in handy. <laughs> this will come in handy for, uh, for Mum. Oh. It's a complete Stanley That's... Rogers King's Pattern Cutlery setting plus a Westminster Fine China Dinner setting for eight people. That's good. He can set it up for eight to sit there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Stanley yeah. Rogers Specialist Cutlers and Silversmiths and Westminster Makers of Fine Quality China guarantee complete replaceability for ten years. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Brendan. A pleasure. Thank All right. Good job. Thanks Good, on. On the show. good boy. There's Brendan. And his face. 
Also tonight, a trip for two to Tasmania with Australian Pacific, travelling with the latest range of non-tear Armalite travel goods from airport luggage. And an exquisite ruby and diamond pendant from the superb diamond collection at Theodore Jewelry. And $1,200 cash from Sunshine Kitchens, makers of beautiful kitchens for over 65 years. And finally, seven days of fun at the new Launceston Federal Country Club for two, flying first class with TAA. Yet another great prize on Dunn's Wheel. And straight after this brief informative interlude, We'll be back with Don and Bert. Yes, here we are. Hi there. Oh, hi. We just. Hey. What do you mean we'll break? be back with Don and Bert? You should say now here are Don and Bert. Now here are. And now here are Don and Bert. Oh, to a surprise. Hey. That's the commercial break. Yeah. Peter Payment did not tell me that. <laughs> Listen. After the show, Peter. Tell them about Gary and Warren Howard Crystal. Well, yeah. Uh, this is something about which Don and I are absolutely thrilled. You know, you you come across sponsors and you come across advertisers in a broadcasting career. Uh, some are uh, middle rung, some are uh, down there, and some are way up there. And Gary and Warren Smith, in our opinion, are way up there. Last Thursday evening in the show, Don had uh, his young friends in from the Victorian School for the Deaf Children. Uh, it was a magnificent piece of, uh, of television. We got so many uh, phone calls, uh, so many telegrams on Friday of last week that I very happily replayed it on New Faces. And Thank you very much. Well, for once again, second time around, Don, uh, in uh, TCN alone, I think in 15 minutes, took 100 calls, or close to 100 amazing. calls. So, amazing thing. Gary and Warren Smith, the people who give away the car on the wheel, were very, very impressed, very moved and very touched, as we were on Thursday night. And, uh, Tell us, Don. and because, uh, because they were, they called up and they said, look, we haven't had a lot of cars go off on the wheel this year. So he said, how would you feel about... Anyway, look, let me call up a couple of people. Kathy Massey and Brian Reynolds, come up here just for a minute, will you? Just, Brian, come on up. And Kathy, come on up. Okay. Uh, Kathy is the executive director of the school, the Victorian School for the Deaf, and Brian Reynolds is the principal of the Victorian School for the Deaf. So just say hello to them. Right. And you I see all the time. Bro. This is very good. Brian, Brian, nice to see you. Come back over here. Folks, uh, so like I said, Gary and Warren Smith uh, were very kind, and, uh, and it, no prompting from us whatsoever. They said, um, we have a car that we'd like to give away. They said, do you have anybody you'd like to give it to? Bert and I chatted. And we said, how about it? Because the kids did such a great job, and because uh, Pam did a good job, and uh, they allowed us the interview, and because uh, a friendship has grown here, and I'm really proud of my association with you guys. So they're going to give us a car. It's a, uh, do we have a, what it is? Um, it's a $7,000 job. It's, uh, it's a Holden Gemini, I think, as I recall correctly. Oh, here's one. It's like that there. Here, look, there it is, right there. And uh, they'll work it out. You know, whatever, which way you're going to do it, and so forth. <laughs> and uh, it's a Holden Gemini. And seven thousand dollars here. And understand, understand too that the boys said, Gary Weinsmith said, uh, you don't have to keep it if you don't want it. You can raffle it, you can sell it, you can put it to use, you can do whatever you want to wish to do with the car. Strictly up to you, and it's yours from from those boys. And uh, we thank them, and I'm I'm sure one of you would like to say thank you too as well. Will you? Wow! Wow! <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah. The kids would you? Exactly. Yes. Kathy, do you want to say anything? It's an unbelievable gesture, and it'll mean so much to all the children and the staff in the school. It's just a, a fantastic thing for the, the television station oh, and sure. the uh, sponsors to do. We're well, most uh, grateful. Uh, thank you. And the, and the kids supplied a, a lot of entertainment, a lot of emotion for people all over Australia. And we thank fantastic. you, too. And, and on behalf of those fellas, and Bert and myself, use it in good health and tell all the kids we said uh, good luck. Thank all right? You. It's thank lovely. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Lovely, nice. Lovely. Lovely. And thanks once again to, to Gary and Warren. And right. I think... Um, I think the sincerity, too, from Gary and Warren was that they didn't necessarily want us to, to mention their name, nor that they want it necessarily done on the show. And I, I think that in itself proves well, exactly what they're about. That's true. And I think it's fair that we did anyway. You know, mm. it's, it's good. Don, now, next Thursday, this is something you don't know about, next Thursday evening is the last show for the year. Yes. And they've got a no, very, very, the last show. A very, very <laughs> busy show. And is, it, uh, is it over? This year's over? Yes, it oh, is. Oh, now well, I've got to go to Honolulu. <laughs> exactly. And back to America. And, and London and everything. And oh, maybe, what a, am I gonna and maybe a special break this year. You know, special. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Don, I thought it was a little special surprise. Would you like me, because on Thursday there might be time... No, no, <laughs> no. Would you like me to do something for you? Yes, take a well, commercial I'll break. do a commercial, and then I'll have something special that will surprise even you. Is that right? After this commercial break. I can't wait, I'm so nervous. You'll love it. <laughs> OK, Don, just hang on one second. Eh? What? You didn't realise that I was a 
A saxophonist, did you? No, I did. With an A? Is that right? Yes. You want to put the strap on? Yes. Just hang Shall on a sec. Give you a hand here. Why don't hang on? You know all about this. You yes. learned this with the salvos when you played with them, didn't you? Yes, many, many years ago. What's I learned just a couple of. <laughs> I learned just a couple of. Okay. Now, unfortunately, it won't break. <laughs> but... That's all. Can I can I suggest something? Yes. I mean, I know you're an experienced musician, yes. and far be it for me to tell you about right. style. You want to take the cap off there before? Oh, the sure, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize right. you did that. Yes. <laughs> say, what would you like to hear, Don? Oh, I remember her in Miami. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's try oh, an arpeggio. Oh, about the microphone way down, if you could, please, Chris. You want to get that, Chris. What do you want to get that sexy? Yeah. Feel? yeah right. Big chance, and I've—it's really Graham Lyle. Come through, Graham. Come over here. I blew it. Oh wait, I'll tell you what you get a chance to do. Yeah. yeah. Graham oh. Lyle, ladies and gentlemen. We got <laughs> Um. So I think uh, you know that thing. Uh, that thing we did at that that show we all did together. Remember that? Oh, show, that big what a movie? night it was! Night at the what a night it was! It really was. Oh, yeah, Such yeah. a night! Oh, what a night! <laughs> what a night it was! Hey, remember at about seven past eleven o'clock, and for the first time all evening, we heard. One laugh ring out. <laughs> you were full. That's it. Throw me yeah, back. Yeah, throw okay. Me. You're gonna I didn't know you could sing until that night. Is that you right? You sing very nice. Not bad. <laughs> Do you <laughs> want to... Thanks, Lynch. You want to... Um, you want to play something? wonderful show yeah. together. Well, how about with... Uh, you you want, want to do, yeah. do it with him? I yeah. mean, he's very mad because I did Vic Damone, you know? Right. Yeah. So you can do something. All right, you find a place yep. when he's playing this yep. and just hop in, okay? Okay. I'll leave right. some would you, would you mind working on this side? I always work on this... You might. Mind, Graham, do you? Because you can be replaced by a record. Okay. Here we go. Uh, all right, you guys, uh, anytime you're ready, Butsy, hit it. Um. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This is our second last show of the year. Of course, uh, on a Thursday night will be our last show of the year, number 80. And boy, it has really been an eventful year for us. A lot of things have happened. There'll be a lot of surprises included in the show. Uh, our special guests, of course, uh, will be uh, Paul Hogan. Uh, Bert and Patty are going to do something that they've you've never seen before. Oh, yeah, you've seen it before, but you won't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tim Evans will be here, Kevin Arnett, of course, our own Collette man, and our very, very special guests for our last show of the year, 
live by satellite uh, from New York, Simon and Garfunkel. So, uh, well, you'll be able to see it at home. What are you owing about it? It'll be all right. Uh, so anyway, we hope you'll be joining us that, for that show. There's a big production number to open with, and there'll be a lot of fun and probably a lot of surprises during the evening, because that's what last shows are all about. I mean, what's he may even come out smiling. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you again for joining us tonight on behalf of everybody. <laughs> I love your faces. And if my kids from the Victoria School for the Deaf are watching, thank you. You were wonderful. I love you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Take it easy. I'd like to remind you that when Dame Edna Everidge's covers food in her fridge, she always uses Gladdy Wrap. <laughs>